This is an Arduino based pistol grip transmitter and receiver with 8 channels and today you and I are going to build them to control your RC car, boat or any other vehicle that requires bi-directional drive and steering. Reap the benefits of proportionate control, trim functionality and long range through building your own transmitter using the following parts and materials including Arduino electronics and other components, hardware, 3D printer filament and of course a 3D printer. If you do not have some of these already, you can obtain them through product links listed in the description. Initially, I started with a prototype breadboard circuit to test each functionality of the upcoming transmitter with roughly connected components I planned to use, all of which I then 3D modeled one by one into the CAD software I use, known as Fusion 360. Each exact part dimension allowed me to accurately design the top cover, the grip inspired by the Desert Eagle, and from there the rest of the transmitter while shelling the halves, adding moving parts and fittings for every single component which leads us to the final 3D design of the grip style transmitter that you can purchase through the link in the description below. There you'll also find print settings listed for you to follow. So let's start 3D printing out each of the primary parts one by one while taking advantage of any extra space by printing out the smaller pieces alongside them. And please excuse all the stringing, it's most likely due to my printer's retraction settings being a little off. I still gotta play around with that. With all parts printed out, we can now remove any support material using knives, picks, or through the warm water method which leads us with both transmitter halves, stand pieces, button, and securing pieces in black while having the wheel, trigger, and top cover in bluish gray filament. Now we can additionally tape up and paint certain parts for color contrast like the steering wheel to make it look as if it has a tire. For securing parts together, we'll melt in these M3 threaded inserts with a soldering iron into the 4mm holes. For shallow holes like these two, we may even need to sand down the brass inserts. The rotary joint between the wheel and right shell can be sanded, have super glue added, and be worn in for smoother rotation. Pieces under tension like the steering link can be strengthened with super glue to avoid being broken. We can then secure the steering link piece to the wheel through the right shell. For the drawer stand assembly, we can slide in a couple of neodymium magnets in these pockets to keep the drawer from sliding out on its own. The first component which we'll install is a joystick module. Let's first trim off enough of the stick for it to fit into the steering assembly. Melting in a piece of steel bicycle spoke with 10mm protruding out will give the necessary control stick to connect with the steering link. We can then secure this joystick with M3 screws followed by installing the throttle joystick with its control stick trimmed as well. Next, we can install the three pin toggle switches, followed by the trimming push buttons, which need to be secured with super glue carefully to avoid seizing their movement. These buttons should protrude enough so you can press them. The next component we'll install is the power switch, which holds itself in without any glue, followed by the 3mm LEDs with the cathode pins facing one another. We can now work on the next shell where the NRF24 radio transceiver gets secured. This is the power amplified version with its power adapter hooked up. Now we're focusing on the top cover, where out of these parts we'll use the plastic ring and begin installing this rubber primer bulb for a gasoline weed whacker engine but used here as a translucent button cap for pressing the Arduino's reset button and viewing its LEDs. Speaking of which, let's desolder the Arduino Nano's pin headers one by one, leaving us with a more compact microcontroller board which we'll secure with four tiny screws onto the underside of the top cover followed by the mode button with its cap and holder screwed into place. Right next to it, we'll insert an active piezo buzzer for sound indication. Then we can mount the tiny I2C OLED display for showing input values, battery voltage and more info. Moving on down we have the potentiometers, each have 100 kilo ohms of resistance but 10k ohms will work fine as well. To match the top cover I've also printed matching color caps on each rotary knob. 
Moving on to the stand, let's secure this 5V boost converter power bank module with an extended and replacement pair of LEDs to indicate the battery's charging status. Then let's solder 24 gauge wires for 5V power output and a female connector for the battery input. This module gets secured with just one screw to prevent wriggling while its LEDs are super glued into the holes. For the aesthetics of it, we'll give the USB ports this cover piece. Next up, let's make a 6000 mAh 3.7V parallel battery pack using two lithium ion cells which you can extract from laptop batteries or purchase from the links below. With all the components finally installed, we can begin preparing wired connectors to connect components with remaining pin headers. Let's take a female pin header row and cut connectors for the radio module, joysticks, and display to which we'll solder colored wires for you to match connections according to the wiring diagram. Now we'll begin soldering resistors at the trimming push buttons to form a resistive analog input for the Arduino to tell which button is being pressed. This helps minimize the number of pins used up from the board. Once this resistive button circuit is made, we can daisy chain the ground connection across components like this joystick followed by a ground connection for the four LEDs through a current limiting resistor. From here, we can wire the LEDs to each outer toggle pin for switch status indication followed by a common power connection and wires from each switch to go to the Arduino. We'll give the push button circuit an output wire and follow up on the pin headered modules by connecting the wired connectors we prepared earlier. Let's ensure each remaining component has its power and ground connections hooked up to the circuit. We'll continue by securing the battery to the shell followed by underlying wires coming in behind from the power module up to the switch and ground. Plus, we'll give the battery a wire for voltage monitoring. To keep wiring tidy, we can glue wires to the shell walls while twisting data wires MOSI and MISO together to reduce electrical noise. We'll begin doing the top panel's wiring by starting with connecting common grounds and power connections along with the input from each sensor. Let's make sure as many wires as possible are tucked in between and under other components. To stabilize the inputs from the toggle switches, we'll take four 10 kilo ohm pull down resistors connecting input pins to ground not to leave any pin in a floating state. Now we should be left with three wired panels. Each shell should have wires for input and power sticking out which connect to the Arduino in the middle according to the wiring diagram which you can find linked below this video. With the control inputs and radio module hooked up, we can connect the battery through a 10k ohm resistor to an analog pin for voltage monitoring. One mistake you can avoid here is securing joysticks with bolts directly to the PCB as this can cut into tracks and cause a short circuit. This however can be prevented using plastic washers. With the transmitter fully wired, we can connect up the battery and test to see that the circuit gets power. As you can see here, I've already programmed the transmitter in advance to ensure everything's working. 
We'll begin closing it up by first loosening the radio module so we can slide on the top panel which slots into each shell held down thanks to its tabs. Securing the shells together is as straightforward as fastening them with 6 M3 screws. To attach the stand, we'll do so through first attaching this panel to the grip which then slides into the stand secured by a screw, followed by two more flat screws in through these holes holding down the front while allowing the drawer to slide. We'll continue attaching remaining parts such as the throttle trigger to the joystick and the 2.4GHz antenna. With that, the transmitter is complete. Now to program it, we'll connect it up to the PC and open the transmitter code which you can find linked in the description. Credits for the code go to Electro Noobs, a fellow maker and YouTuber who made an Arduino 6 channel thumbstick transmitter. I happened to pick most of its handy features from my transmitter but placed and used differently. If you're looking to control planes or drones, you can follow his transmitter video tutorial linked below. This is the transmitter code. For mine, however, I modified it by renaming variables and adding two extra channels for one more aux switch now having eight channels of control, which I divided to have four output PWM signals to channels one through four at the receiver for proportionate control of motors and servos, as well as four other channels for digital high and low output to turn headlights and horns on or off. I also optimized the part of the code that handles values outputted to the display according to my changes. If you wish to adjust the range of the transmitter, play around with these different power levels. However, you'll probably get the most reliable results when set to high. All inputs and output pins are defined for you. All we need to do is check that our board, the Arduino Nano, processor and COM port are selected according to the hardware. With that, we can hit upload and wait for the transmitter to boot up. This was my initial rough 2D sketch of the transmitter on paper. Turned out pretty on point, huh? As I move the trigger and steering wheel, you can see how the values change on screen. To trim the throttle value so you end up getting accurate 0 to 255 PWM values at the output, you press either of the two buttons below the power switch to raise or lower the midpoint value to 127 or 129 and likewise for the steering value using the upper two buttons. And to invert the throttle or steering, you hold down on that specific forward facing button from either pair of trimming buttons. However, to trim the potentiometers, you can manually adjust the midpoint values in the code if they happen to be offset. By pressing the mode button, you change the ramping of the input values either to linear for a consistent increase in value or exponential for an upward curve for gradual speed increase. Each toggle switch when flicked has its corresponding side LED turned on with the switch status updated on the display. You can use the bulb on top either to reset the Arduino or simply use it to see the LEDs. To charge the transmitter, you plug a micro USB cable into the port below. Charging time for the 6000 mAh battery is around 6 hours. In using the port above, you turn the transmitter into a power bank to charge devices or lithium cells for your smaller RC vehicles. Within the base or stand, you get a drawer that slides out to store smaller tools, spare parts, or really anything that can fit. And at the top rear, you can use the loophole if you prefer to wear a neck strap with your transmitter. Next up, we're making the receiver unit. You can find all the parts and components to assemble it listed below with product links. Let's begin by taking a 3 by 7 cm perforated board and trim the female and male pin headers to size according to each module, the number of output channels, and the number of power inputs available, then place them on the circuit board according to the layout shown. For the radio module's power regulation, we'll solder an AMS 1117 voltage regulator with input and output filtering capacitors along with a current limited power LED. This gives the NRF24 module a clean 3.3 volt supply. We'll then bend pins and tape down headers so we can flip the board around without parts falling out to begin securing each one with solder. Let's make ground and power our first connections before moving on to signal wiring.
For external power input, we have a 3-pin header for V in, ground, and 5 volts. The remaining male header row of pins connects to the Arduino's digital pins with the last pin connecting to an analog one set for digital output. To connect the radio module's SPI data lines, we'll use some more of this 30-gauge wire for pins CE, CSN, MOSI, MISO, and SCK. We'll additionally connect to the Arduino's power and communication wires from the FTDI to reach through to the Arduino Pro Mini on the other side. Now we'll give the Pro Mini some legs before inserting it and the radio module into the board. Those wires that stick out can now connect to the Arduino's pins for the computer connection. We'll finish up by checking for potential shorts between power lines before testing the receiver. We can finally push in the NRF24 radio transceiver into the circuit. If space doesn't concern you and you want a greater range, you can upgrade to the power amplified version. Trimming the board is completely optional, but makes the receiver look more compact. You may also find the Arduino receiver circuit diagram linked below among the other resource files. To connect the finished receiver for programming, we'll select 5 volts through a tiny jumper on board the FTDI USB to serial converter and connect the receiver through it to our PC. The receiver code is all adjusted for you and can be found linked below as well. All we need to change this time is the board we're uploading to, and then we can hit upload. However, with the Pro Mini, you'll most likely need to press its reset button immediately as it says uploading so the code flashes to the board successfully. Now let's test the Arduino-based transmitter and receiver on a brushed hobby-grade RC system. We'll have the ESC for driving the car connected to channel 1 and a servo motor for steering hooked up to channel 2. We'll connect the drive motor to the speed controller followed by the battery. With the circuit powered on through the ESC, it's ready for testing. We now have Arduino-based proportionate control of an RC car system including forward and reverse drive. The trim feature comes in super handy for adjusting steering midpoints on a servo. If we change the channels 3 or 4, we can control a motor with either one of the potentiometers. Additionally, we can hook up lights to the upper 4 channels toggled on or completely off with the switches. You can get more creative and even add a buzzer for a horn. And you thought that's all I'd give you for a demo? Wrong. Now let's take it up a notch and set up an old four-wheel drive hobby grade truggy with full suspension and a brushed motor now with an Arduino RC system. I've also given it a pair of headlights which are current limited and driven through a custom MOSFET driver circuit controlled by the Arduino. We'll begin by mounting the ESC, servo motor, and Arduino receiver. Then connect up the motors, headlights, horn, and finally the two cell battery. Now we're just about ready to give the car a spin outside with the Arduino transmitter. Hang on a second. Someone's trying to reach me. What's this? Hey, want to try out one of our kits? Meet Chatter? Chatter is an encrypted wireless communicator that sends info through radio waves similar to our transmitter, only that it's like a text-based walkie-talkie and is actually one of many interactive electronics kits you can assemble from Circuit Mess, a quarterly STEM kit subscription service offering you exciting and educational electronics kits sent to you every three months to build with your friends or family, and Chatter, which I'm assembling, happens to be one of them. These kits give you the benefit of hands-on learning through installing components, soldering 
powering connections, programming hardware, and the whole making process of putting together awesome devices such as these chatters, gaming consoles, music synthesizers, and even AI robots while giving you and your family a memorable experience. To try out these kits, click the link in the video description below and get 10% off all circuit mess orders using the code MAX10 at checkout. Hmm. Looks like we better hit the road, shall we? From my tests, the Arduino transmitter seems to have an exceptional range of well over 200 meters with only the smaller radio module on the receiving end, while instead a power amplified transceiver like in the transmitter would most likely extend the control range to well over one kilometer. However, the smaller receiver antenna is more than enough for RC cars, in my opinion. Now, if you're looking to delve deeper into building your Arduino transmitter, don't miss out on reading my full tutorial blog written on the Electrolabs project platform with images and key takeaways to get your own transmitter and receiver up and running. Check the link below. Also guys, let me know in the comments below specifically what project you'd like me to control with this Arduino transmitter. I have an idea in mind already, but maybe you got a better one. Look forward to hearing it. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, you can make anything you set your minds to. See you in the next one.